What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the right side of the map in the red color playing as Oranos. His name is Kimo. His partner today in the teal color playing as Poseidon. His name is Joe. Their opponents today in the green color playing as Ra. His name is Ikaro. And his partner today in the blue color playing as Ra is Green Sea Squash. We have a salty run back if I've ever seen it. It seems like Ikaro and Green Sea Squash think that they can win this matchup against these two fine individuals. And they're going to work out a way to do it. We're on Blue Lagoon, so it is a very, very different map to the Watering Hole map. And the thing is that a big reason why Joe and Kimo won that first game was that water side build that Joe managed to do. If that doesn't exist here which I'm going to be here and say it doesn't exist. Will there be any way for uh, for Joe and Kimo to push that advantage that they had and actually win? Whereas if it didn't happen, Green Sea Squash was putting pushing Kimo back in that game. So this might be a very, very different game here. Uh, I imagine we're not going to be seeing as big of a boom from Green Sea Squash and Ikaro this game. They might try and be a little bit more aggressive. Ikaro's early Spearman on the Watering Hole game wouldn't have done as much damage as, as maybe on this map. So maybe those early Spearmen might come out and get a little bit more damage onto uh, Joe. But it's looking like Ikaro is now facing off against Kimo, and Joe is facing off against Green Sea Squash. So again, we talk about the difference between a 2v2 and a 3v3, or 1v1 and a 2v2. A lot of the times, 2v2s become two separate 1v1s with very slight touching ups of double teams, trying to outmaneuver just that little bit. But these guys are top players, and they're looking for every single advantage they can get. So, like the last game where they managed to converge on a town center and take that down, this map very, very different. You can see the town centers. It's almost like a, a clock here. We have 12 o'clock. We have 1 o'clock. We have 2 o'clock. We have 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. It is a clock. We have a clock here, which means one thing. It means one thing. Double teaming a town center is much, much harder for Kimo and Joe. However, we do have Orano, so Oranos can circumvent that with some Sky Passage shenanigans and also with the fact that he moves quite fast. And I would love to see Kimo utilize some Sky Passage uh, things in this game. It's one of those, it's one of those things that Orano's players in team games just I feel like they don't do it. And yes, you sacrifice one villager and you sacrifice what is it, 300 resources? 350 resources. So it's not cheap. You have to build two of them as well. So it's 700 resources. It's not cheap to do so. But once the villager gets over there, you can just chuck him onto like a wood line or a gold mine or something. Totally fine. And then you have an underworld passage, which your opponents don't realize. The difference between a sky passage and underworld passage is, yes, underworld passage is uh, free, but it tells your opponent, no, you did it. Your opponents know you did it. For, for Oranos, there's nothing to tell them that you did it. You're just, units are just popping out over there. And unless they see the Sky Passage, they won't know. So they'll be like, how are you over here? And how are you over here? They will work out there's a Sky Passage eventually. But how then do you counter it? Where is the Sky Passage? All of those very, very cool things. We've got the gates coming up now for Ikaro. It seems like a little bit of harass was going on here. Is this uh, wall a bit, a bit confused? Oh, actually, no, that was um, that was Ikaro using a, a cheeky exploit there. Let's just not talk about that. Uh, we've got the uh, got the monument to the villagers over here up for Ikaro. Is a little bit of a bad placement here because it, it might, if there was villagers gathering over here, they might walk around and bump into this and then have to walk all the way around. But at this point, it's completely fine. Uh, we do see the tar coming through for Green Sea Squash nice and fast here. He's done this both games. And in fact, he is going to be moving his pigs over onto this town center. Absolutely love that from Green Sea Squash. He's going to be going for a standard fast farm here. Two town center fast farm over on this location. We do see the Katoska pots over here. Uh, it's very, very rare in a team game to see early Theseus, early Capolita, because the maps are so much bigger, you don't get that advantage. 
and there's the uh, Prometheus, there's the Hermes, so it's very, very similar gods. Thus far, we do see the Valor coming down onto this location here, going to be trying to prevent Ikaro from grabbing the Ford Town Center, but Ikaro is already on the back Town Center. There are actually some very, very nice Zebra here as well. Do Ikaro and uh, Squash know about this? Yes, they do, and it's looking as if Ikaro is going to be like, can I have those? I don't have any pigs. So... He's going to be taking those, and uh, Green Sea Squash is going to be taking these. So good teamwork here. Uh, oftentimes, you would see this and be like, I'm probably going to take those as the uh, this Ra player because there's no forest here. But uh, it, this is definitely closer for Ikaro as well anyways. But we do see the uh, Oracle is going to be taking down this gate here. Nice play from uh, from Kimo to find some value from his early, early, some value from his early Valor. Uh, Kimo is now getting himself his second town center over here. And is he throwing up military buildings? He's getting himself a house and he's moving forward with these villages. Yet again, I think there is a way in this matchup, in a team game specifically, that it might be better for the Uranus players to do two town center fast heroics here instead of two town center classical fights. I could be wrong about this. Uh, obviously, if you're going to be utilizing the Sky Passage, you can get a lot of value at double teaming your opponent. Um, your opponent can't really come over and help you, but you can help them. And we'll see how this is all going to go. Going to be eating one of these elephants. This is a beautiful town center here for Joe. A whole 750 food that he can bring right next to it is absolutely beautiful. And we do see that uh, Kimo is going to be getting himself a Black Lotus. And he is going up to three town centers here. So the question is, for Ikaro, what is he going to be doing? Um, Ikaro... I, this situation here, you can see that there's so much black on the map and you basically have no idea what Kimo's doing. So at this point you go, well, Kimo, he's got score drop twice. So either he's going two town center, three town centers here, or he's going two town center fast heroic, or he's gone fast heroic into a two town center, right? Those are the three options. Fast heroic into a two town center doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So it's probably two town centers. Uh, it's probably it's probably fast three town centers because he's not going to be able to have the resources to get two town centers fast heroic here. So you know right now that Kimo is going to go three town centers, but we aren't seeing Ikaro react at all here, where he could be going for his two town center into spearman uh, play and be harassing that, getting scouting information and preventing this town center from coming up. But that's not happening here. Kimo's going to have this boom. He's going to be very very happy. Uh, and he's going to be uh, continuing in this game. See these villagers going to be moving over onto this location. Joe's probably going to grab himself his third town center here. No surprises here. Joe did this build last game for very, very big success. We do see the Pharaoh here going to be fighting off the Hippolyta and the Theseus. No walls here from uh, Ikaro, but his towers are relatively well positioned. The, the Hippolyta can sit on this location and just be annoying. It is, it is very, very annoying as... Um, as an Egyptian player to have to deal with Hippolyta. But let's be real, you didn't build any units and the, the Greek player did. So what can you expect? Yeah, they spent 200 wood, you spent nothing. So you need to have some sort of um, punishment for not building anything. So you can say that it's annoying all you like, but you did nothing to prevent it. So continuing along here, Ikaro's reign is down. Green Sea Squash's reign has happened. So much food in the bank for these players. How are they going to use it? Now, one way you can do this for uh, for Green Sea Squash and Ikro is go straight into uh, straight into trade. Straight into trade. Because you have so much extra food in the bank. If you go two town centers trade and your opponent, both your opponents go three town centers, you are in effect actually in front if you can afford to be making those camel caravans because the camel caravans are slightly more efficient than the villages are because you don't need to get any upgrades on them these villages here uh even at shaft mine they're not faster not better than a than a trade caravan the problem does arise when your opponents start hitting your trade route um but obviously that's a raid and that's that's something you have to deal with so right now joe's three town centers he's not actually not actually building villages out of this town center so i'm not sure if that's just i think that's just a mistake there from joe he'll sort that out eventually i would assume well, there he goes Kimo is three town centers and he's starting to get those units built out. He's making himself Mermillo and Terma. Uh, again, Ooh. like let's just let's just think about this just a little bit. What do the Terma really do here? Not a lot. What do the Mermillo really do here? Not a lot. Just go to the heroic age. 
Like, if we take a look at this army here, Kimura's got six, six, uh, 300 food here. He could probably get to the heroic edge at about 930. Three town center, fast, heroic. Uh, could be an option here against this. Maybe. Just maybe. Maybe not. Maybe it's a bit weak. We do see a beautiful shockwave here from uh, Kimo. Going to be attempting to take down this Patsukos, but it's going to jump into the rock and it's going to be running away. Uh, and we do see one uh, Mamillo falls for that damage down. I assume that Ikaro is just going to pull this Patsukos back, heal it back up with the priest, and, and that's going to be a big, big win there for Ikaro. As Kimo is still pumping out these villages as fast as he can. Joe doing the same thing. And what's happening over here for Green Sea Squash? Green Sea Squash, he's not able to get his second town center. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Mythic Age here. His market is not up. He has drawn up a market here and getting a wall over here. Definitely want to get the market up in this corner eventually. But if you're trading with your partner, you get that boosted trade. Uh, if you check this out, if you trade with a allied town center, it produces more gold, cannot be garrisoned 50%. 50% uh, more gold if trading with an ally. So if imagine this is the hometown center and you get, say, 80 gold for it, you actually get 120 gold for this one. So it's super, super value. Don't need to go into the very corner. Obviously, you get a ton more gold if you do. But we do see a Migdol Stronghold up on this location here for Green Seas. Quashes Chemo is trying to converge on that location to try and take it down. There could be a big, big double team coming down onto this location very soon but i imagine ikaro very very calm here making a ton of units he's got a beautiful gold mine double walled already over here and another gold mine over here so kimo's got no real avenue to put pressure onto his opponent uh, at this point in the game so ikaro is coming over here he's got a couple of units onto this already uh, but you have to remember one victor stronghold is scary for a small amount of poseidon units it's not that scary for a fairly decent amount of Poseidon units plus Aranus units. As that's exactly what's happening here as Chemo moving in. And these players are just like, what are you doing, Green Sea Squash? I don't even care. Let me just take down your villagers. And this is a brutal raid. No Shockwave available for Chemo. No God Power available for Joe. But just pure pressure right now. We see the Patsukos is in over here. The Apollos are immediately going to be targeting this one down. The Hero Terma popping onto this as well. Going to get some big, big DPS done by the Camelry. Targeting it down. The Apollos is now starting to shoot the Patsukos. Look at that damage there from the Apollos. So we are seeing the villagers getting pulled off their gold mine. Going to be trying to target this one back. And uh, it looks like Green Sea Squash has set up his team to fail here uh, by going for this gold mine. We see all these units for Joe just sitting under this Migdal Stronghold doing tons of damage. We see the Terma running over here. It looks like the Myth units are all out for Ikaro though. And Ikaro, so big, so strong right now with all of these Myth units. These Patsukos do so much damage. He's going to easily be able to fend off these units. But Joe's saying, I want to take this Migdal Stronghold down. I don't care. And... Green Sea Squash says, well, what are you doing? Repair rate, too good with Ra. Going to be able to defend this. No problems here. And Akimo, Joe going to have to pull back. The damage, though, has been done. That's a lot of idle time. A lot of dead villagers there. A lot of these are villager carcasses. And that's huge for uh, Green Sea Squash. Uh, oh, sorry, for Kimo and Joe. Very, very bad for Green Sea Squash. He's going to be having to recuperate here. We do see this town center still not getting grabbed. Green Sea Squash is in the Mythic Age right now. He's managed to get himself that Son of Osiris out. Ikaro, on the other hand, he's two town centers as well. Not able to get his third town center just yet. Though he probably could have thought about getting it while this fight was going on. Uh, and we are seeing Kimo just returning over here. And we see the Son of Osiris get a big, big zap onto these units. Does snipe one of those chariot archers beautifully there before getting away. So nice play play. And now we see the town center coming up for Ikaro. We've got the rock flying overhead. Kimo says, immediately I'm coming over here. But Ikaro's got the army comp. He's got four Patsukos, one Wadget. Not that many heroes here for Kimo. So these myth units will do so much damage. There's the Hyperion coming through for Kimo as he does immediately cast the Chaos down onto this location. That's going to make one of those Patsukos do so much damage. And we do see a shifting stance there by Ikaro to save his army and uh, and leave the Patsukos behind. The town center is still going to be attempting to get up here. We will be seeing Ikaro attempt to retreat these away, but there's a hero Terma chasing this one down. The villagers do drop the head. Very, very lucky by Ikaro that one of those javelins did miss, it seemed like, at the very least. And now Ikaro is going to be moving over onto this gold mine, it seems like, as Kimo is going to be able to prevent that 
Joe over here taking his time, does not need to put too much pressure on just yet, wants to get to the uh, Mythic Age here, he's in the Heroic Age defending these raids thus far. Joe with a lot of gold in the bank, does he have a market? I don't see a market up just yet, but he is building it, so now he can buy himself 500 food, go to the Mythic Age, probably through Artemis. We do see a Locust up here, again misfiring this Locust, pl placing that one to the top of the mining camp, and the village is just simply going to calmly walk away. No problems here. And we do see these units fighting each other off the cavalry, getting a big damage done onto these Hippocon. The cavalry are very, very strong here against Hippocon. Uh, even though they are medium Hippocon, it's not quite enough to really deal with this. It's going to be close. And we do see the Chariot Archer get sniped down. And then the, maybe the two Hippocon will win this. But now, surely Joe going to the Mythic Age? No, nope, he's not. He's not buying the food to go there, but we are seeing uh, a priest now helping this out. A big shockwave, literally hitting every one of those units there for Kimo. Beautiful job there. Ikaro having to retreat back. We just see the hero, Mermilla, going to get sniped down. Still no Patsukos are falling. This Sator is a good response here onto these units. The Mermilla all going to be trying to target this down, but with the medium destroyer coming in, that's going to do a lot of damage. Now we see the Mermilla going after these villagers. Kimo says, I'm just going to keep pushing in here. I don't mind. Another palace coming in. Three destroyers in onto this location. Ikaro not able to do too much. The raid's still coming in onto Joe's villagers. Green Sea Squash too far behind, though, as Joe pushing in over here, doing some big damage. He's still not going to the next age, getting himself out at Atlanta here. So we see the villagers all getting picked off. These destroyers just completely prevent this Townsend from going up right now. We are seeing the Satyr going after this uh, Wadger and a curse onto this location. Kills so many villagers. But Ikaro hits the Mythic Age there through Osiris and he's going to start being able to hold onto this location very, very nicely now with that one. Uh, even after that curse, it's so much damage there. Uh, and Joe in a beautiful position. Chemo starting to dwindle, though, as he's not able to make his way through here. So this is kind of all going to be up to Joe to make this happen in this game, it seems like, as... Uh, Green Sea Squash, a little bit far behind. We do see some raids over here pushing off of that gold mine. Ikaro uh, needs to maybe help help uh, Green Sea Squash out with getting some gold mines because Joe is all over the map. No gold mines currently under security for Green Sea Squash. He's on this gold mine here. But remember, Kimo can just come over and hit that as much as he wants. And we are seeing Kimo now. He's got himself that, uh, that Hecate. Uh, and not Hecate. Yes, Hecate. Helios. He's got that Helios. Uh, Mythic Age, God Power, Vortex, and he's going to be making all of these destroyers, and he's sent the, the Termo over onto this location. He's going to be hitting uh, Green Sea Squash's town center here, it seems, as Green Sea Squash has got nothing remaining. He's going to teleport here. Uh, we don't have any Shifting Sands, I don't think think yes we do have a shifting sands so we can see the shifting sands from these units get t teleported over here to deal with this if that's what uh green sea squash thinks is the right play here uh but the heck of is going to be pushing in very very fast we've got all these 12 d heavy destroyers to target this down and where is ikaro going he's going to be making the movement with his army onto this location here and the vortex the teleport way too strong here and this is going to be taking the town center down incredibly fast these villagers are not going to stand a chance at holding this one and not only this the trade route now going to be starting to get taken out here that's going to hurt so much and going to allow joe probably the time he needs to secure this town center meanwhile this is all going on the raid from green sea squash getting taken out and we see hephaestus through for joe not going for that uh that earthquake here in this game not going for Artemis here, he realizes the, the Fortified Town Center Mason is probably too strong, but this is not Fortified Town Center Masons. This is no Masons here. It's just Fortified Town Center, so Earthquake could have done some big damage. Meanwhile, we do see the raid coming over here. We've got five heavy Hippocon going to attempt to take the Migdal Stronghold down. Green Sea Squash reacting nicely. Going to try and repair this one back up here. And we will be seeing the Town Center getting rebuilt now by Green Sea Squash as the push dwindling out and Kimo going to try and escape this area. What Kimo can do now as it's one minute of, of recharge is just Vortex over onto this location now and then push forward as all of these green units are over here and that's probably going to force a Shifting Sands of some variety but uh, you could definitely come back over here. We see this Son of Osiris is very much staying on this location. Uh, meanwhile, we see the Destroyers taking down the markets of 
uh, Green Sea Squash. The wall's coming down for Joe as he's going to be cutting off the corner here. This McDoll Stronghold getting taken down. Got so many of these Hefe Kippicon, but no uh, Spirited Charge here for Joe. He does have the Colossus coming in onto this location. Going to take down the McDoll Stronghold very fast. No mummies out just yet for Green Sea Squash as now we've got the Fire Siphon pushing forward the Arcus here to take down the Son of Osiris. No Micro just yet from Chemo. The uh, Bird's getting sniped there, unfortunately. Just flying around the map, living the dream, but we'll get taken out. And there's the Son of Osiris getting targeted now by Chemo. Going to take this down very, very fast, but nice Micro there from Ikro, the Town Center, under a lot of pressure here as these Fire Siphon, fairly easy to kill, but... They do need to be targeted by quite a few units to take them down because they have such high HP. And in this moment, it seems as if the town center will be formed. We see Masons coming through there just in time for Ikaro, but it's not going to be enough as the town center falls. And now Kimo can start really starting to push in onto Ikaro's base here as Joe is also pushing into Green Sea Squash's base. And Green Sea Squash, in that moment, realizes Ikaro could have taken too long to deal with Chemo here in this game. Chaos gets thrown down, and Ikaro uh, and Squash get defeated yet again here as Joe and Chemo beat them two games to three in this best of three that they played. What an incredible series here from these guys, showing the power of Arano's Poseidon in this matchup. Uh, there was a nice try here from Green Sea Squash and Ikaro. I do think that maybe in team games, you might want, when you got double Ra, you might want to consider using Bast because the extra food is great and all gets the economy set up going, but against Aranos and against Poseidon, just imagine two, three Sphinx for both players running around causing chaos, all of the multi-rage you can do, and that really prevents uh, Joe and Kimo from getting that boom happening, and it's a very, very different game to play, but the Ptah here, the two town center Ptah, just seemingly did not quite uh, allow Green Sea Squash and Ikaro enough uh, to to hold against the double on this gold mine. I feel like maybe if Green Sea Squash had gone for this gold mine first instead of the four one, could have been a different game here because there's not really much opportunity to double Green Sea Squash's secondary gold mine, but didn't go for that. And unfortunately for Ikaro and Green Sea Squash, fortunately for Joe and Kimo, they do take this series. If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next game.